uh, what's up, what's up, Instagram? Uh, let's see. All right, guys. I be honey. Um, I'm here to do God's will and God's way. Uh, so I'm super, I'm super excited about this moment, and I um, don't take for granted this moment. I just been sitting with God, and I've been having an opportunity to just see God for who He really is. And I'm live on Instagram. I'm live on Facebook because I want to make sure that the message comes across. And I just want to go into a worship, man. I just been, I came from my nail technician and she was just saying so many positive things about me. This woman may see me like once a month and I'm impacting her life so much. And she was telling me that she can, she can tell that I care about people because she heard me uh, giving some advice over the phone to someone in need. And I was directing that person as if they were myself. And guys, when I come on here, I'm uh, giving you advice as I would give to myself. I wouldn't tell you anything that I wouldn't do. These are things that I put in practice. These are things that I've learned. These are things that I've overcame or um, overcoming in the present tense. So I just want to worship God uh, by singing him a song. Listen, I love God so much. It doesn't matter if I'm a singer or not. Um, but it is what it is. Never would have made it. Never could have made it without you. I would have lost it all. But now I see that you are there for me. And I'll say, never would have made it. Never could have made it without you. I would have lost it all. But now I see how you are there for me. And I will say I'm stronger, I'm wiser, I'm better, so much better. When I look back at all you've done for me, God, I can't do nothing but put a praise on it. I celebrate. Because he called and will help, help me. <laughs> Hallelujah. I must tell Jesus all of my, all of my troubles. Because he called and will help, help me. Guys, in this Ask Honey, I just allow you guys to see me be very transparent. I have been changed by the Most High God. I am watching the God uh, uh, that sits high and looks low. Take me, renew me, and uh, repurpose me, and give me a reason for breathing, a reason for existing. So when I wake up, I'm not just a number in the masses. I am a person that cares to impact. So I'm so grateful for that. Now, before we go into the Ask Honeys, Ask Honey, uh, let me introduce myself. I be the H to the U to the N and Y, the author and the poet, the one and the only. Listen, it's only, it's, I, I be the only one like this. I don't believe you will ever find me anywhere else. And that's what makes me special. But I be a woman that loves God with all <laughs> my heart, my soul, and my mind. All of me says, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So I want to invite the Holy Ghost into this moment. I can already feel God's presence. I have seen uh, God communicate so many things to me today, which has allowed me to humble myself. And say, yes, God, I will do an Ask Honey. We're not going to miss this week. 
because we have other things that I have to do to present myself to the Lord thy God. So I was like, the day is very appropriate for me to do his will. So allow me to usher in his presence a little bit more and allow me to sit silently with God. I am worthy. I am love. I am called for such a time as this. Hold your hair up, your head up high, Queen. So listen, um, I definitely want to enter into prayer. So let's do that. Spirit of the living God, I thank you. I thank you that I uh, willingly gave you my yes. Um, it wasn't my idea when I woke up today that ask honey will be something that you will ask of me. But God, I want to be so great at saying yes to your will and to your way. Because I have no idea what someone else on the receiving end of this, what they need, what hour they're in. So God, I thank you for teaching me how to lay me down so that I can pick up my cross and so that I can be in position, and so that I can teach others that you may have to slow your day down so that you can pick God up and ask God, what is your agenda? So this is your agenda. It's not my agenda. These are your people. These are not my creation. But I have the opportunity to reveal to people your reflection and how good you are to allow me to be changed right before their very eyes and to say how much I love to shower you with my yes and my obedience, God. It's not costing me anything, but it costs Jesus everything. So I will spend my time devoting my time to you. But God, for the person that this message is for, and only you know the message. <laughs> only you can put it together as only you can. I want to show them that I believe in you so much that even um, when I don't know what you're going to say, that the message is going to be good because, God, you are considering what someone is going, uh, going through in the present time. So I thank you for being a present help. I ask that you touch our minds, silence any disturbance, anything that wish to crawl in and to interfere and be counterproductive to your messaging going forth. Hallelujah, God. We die to self right now. Flesh will not get in the way of your good word. Thank you for your gospel, the good news that gives us a reason to rise up and together we'll stand. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Uh, amen. So, um, Again, I already introduced myself. I am Honey. I am an author, a poet. I have a book uh, called Becoming Honey and another book back there called Rooted. But today we're going to be coming from the book, uh, the book Becoming Honey. And um, the reason we're coming from Becoming Honey, man, because y'all ain't never read. If you ain't read the book, you don't even know why God is using this book. Now, before we go in it, I want to share to share with you guys of why I be in worship like this. Why am I so devoted? Why do I come on here and give it my all because I know my why? Um, a few years back, um, about 2018, I received a prophecy in a prophet where um, a prophet hears directly from the kingdom. The kingdom tells them a message to relay to the uh, man or woman before them to let them know uh, what, what heaven is saying. And so I'm going to read to you the prophecy. It's speaking to me. At the time, I was still called Patrice, the name that my mother and father gave me. But now I am Patrice called Honey. Honey is my heaven name, right? 
And so I, uh, I share my heaven name with you. I didn't have to. I could just keep it between God and myself. But I'm so grateful, baby. I was screaming at the mountaintops. So the prophecy says, you have the ability to speak your destiny. In the atmosphere, there is change. Don't change a thing by you. God is getting ready to shift you to another place. Your prayers two years ago are about to manifest in the atmosphere. Your change is in the atmosphere. God's clouds are about to produce rain. Faith has manifest what you've been saying out your mouth. Come on, somebody. It started with saying you have the, the ability to speak your destiny. Right? So there's some authority in this, in this temple right here, right? So that's why I'm very careful and very cautious that I'm not presenting honey before you, but God before you. So I have to put a praise on it. I have to put a worship on it. I have to die to self because whatever I say, you know, I can speak destiny over you guys. So if I'm coming over here in bondage, if I'm over here not knowing who God is and pretending to know, that's not good for you, right? I am sabotaging the kingdom objective and the kingdom agenda for going forward. And I don't want to be in the way of that. Guys, I've held on, I held on to this for years. Because in that same breath, it was saying two years ago that I'll be everything that God was telling me will be manifested. That is so true. In that same prophecy, the man told me that I will have a book in the Bible. And that I will write, my story will be written, and I will share that story to help change the lives of many men and women. And so I can only assume this is a story because this was the first book that came forth, right? And this book allowed me to free myself from uh, the snars of the enemy um, because my story was like on any story I have ever read. Um, I don't hold back in here. And so I want to get into the reason why God has asked me to share. I highlighted this part um, a few days ago. And I knew that God would want me to share, but I didn't know how he wanted me to share this. So we're on page 61. And I'm talking about how I... Um, walk into sin and one thing that God has uh, brought to my attention is that sometimes all I can see is my abusers all I can see is my threats but what I forget is my hand in um, the madness and what happened um, a long time ago, uh, bad things happened to me, but how I knew those things happened is because I got away from the commitment that I had with the Most High God, which was I would save myself to marriage. I had a dream of being a married 2.0, that God was going to be able to use me His way and to have his way with my life. And so if he wanted to bring another Jesus 2.0 to the world. And that I will be able to be used. But in this book, I never really touch on um, so much of how disappointed I was when I gave myself over to my high school sweetheart. All because I knew that this man said he loved me and I felt a spark for him as well, I still failed to honor my commitment, which was saving myself, preserving myself, honoring myself to say no. Because in the beginning of the in parts of the book, I said he was willing to wait. But see, somewhere in that relationship, I was willing to compromise. Because he was so great. He was so good. 
that I forgot that God was greater. And you know, and that my promises to myself matter. Oftentimes, we'll give ourselves over to people and um, saying that they should matter more than we should matter. And when I did that, I freely opted out of saying that I should have standards and boundaries for my life. And I suffered behind that compromise. So I have stated before that things have happened to me, but I want to touch on what I did. I got away from, from that commitment. I got away from that promise. I got away from my yes, Lord, that I will follow, that I will trust, and that I will give over. Because when I, when I said yes to him, I had no idea that these new feelings, these new urges would come. So when I said yes to him, I allowed the enemy to come in and to put inside of me these new desires, these new temptations, right? And so um, it reads, I'm on page uh, 61. And I say, my new urges were unfamiliar but real. I could faintly hear my granny's voice saying that God disapproves. I talked about my granny about a week back or so saying that my grandmother was a woman of faith. And I wrote to my grandmother about these urges. And these urges I'm referring to is my urges for a woman, the same sex. And... Um, my, my new urges were, were unfamiliar but real. I could faintly hear my granny voice saying that God disapproves. The sound was not distinctive enough to disrupt my plans. I felt like I was dropped and hidden from God's protection. Where was God when everyone took their turn at humiliating me? As a young girl, what I labeled as love turned out to be sinful acts. When did my life become this video game of simulation where people could kindly insert pain wherever and however? I labeled myself a castaway and no longer as one of God's chosen ones. Listen, this is why we can't sit alone with ourselves and our minds and think too much. Think too much without inviting God in to have into that conversation. See, I started off with my new urges. I owned it. Right? I See, when you take ownership of the temptation and you say, well, I'm going to bow to this. Not bow to the God that I knew was true. The same God yesterday, today, and forever. I bow to the urge. Right? I um, said that I'm no longer in a sound mind. I'm going to operate in this double-mindedness. That Double-mindedness is when you're no longer drinking from the fountain of purity. You're saying that I'm polished and refined enough to where um, it is okay if I walk and let go of God's hand. If I'm no longer hiding in the shadows, I'm no longer leaning into God saying that I need his covering. I believe I got a little enough of God so I can finesse my way out of any circumstance. Oh my goodness. That is <laughs> not a good way to think. Man, you're going to get yourself in some traps and some strongholds, right? But I said that I knew that my grandmother disapproved. My grandmother wrote a letter stating that she disapproved and that I should pray. But I wanted God, I wanted my grandmother to give me the answer right then and there, but she was sending me to God. She was doing the right thing by asking me to go to God. But her voice was not distinctive enough to disrupt my plans. And see, it wasn't a human voice I needed to hear. So I don't come on here telling you that my voice will be distinctive enough to allow you to yield to God. So what I will do is share a voice 
of the good shepherd that is um, greater than I am that will be able to speak to your spirit man. So stay with me. I'll, I'll get to that point, right? But see, I was so caught up in looking at the pain that I had no idea that God had a plan on changing um, me entirely to give me a whole new identity, a whole new name, and to show me who I am in Him. Not who I am to my birth family, because that's totally different. They, they completely underestimated me. That's why people were able to have their way with me, because they had no idea what God was going to do in the now and going forward, right? So, because I thought God was playing a game with me, I no longer felt as if I belonged to him. I saw myself as a castaway. Right? That's very... Listen. When this man prophesied to me, uh, two years prior to me starting writing this book, he saw something good inside of me. Something that was valuable. Something... Um, of a substance, something that was good to be a resource for the kingdom. But see, that's one thing when you don't see what God sees. I couldn't see what God had for me in the moment. And so although this man of God could see, and, and could see it so much that he stopped the young lady and say, hey, I need you to sit and write down what God sees in this young lady because she's a powerful force to be reckoned with. You have the ability to speak your destiny and I'm like, then why do I see nothing but hardships? Why do I only see um, a battlefield of my mind, right? It's because I hadn't humbled myself to God's will and way over my life. This is a good opportunity for me to bring uh, Jesus into the matter and so you'd be like okay honey what qualifies you to come on here let's go to uh, Colossians uh, chapter 3 <laughs> we're going to bring it together and now we I'm, I'm giggling because I have no idea what God is about to do and so God has me here because I've been studying this and will study this perhaps through Sunday and then I'll get a new word, right? It says, so chapter 3, verse 1. So if you have been raised with Christ, right? So if you have been raised with Christ. So initially in my younger years, in my adolescence, I was raised with my grandmother. That wasn't enough to keep me rooted in faith. That wasn't enough to keep me grounded and say that I will not break away. See, I needed to be, you have been raised, I needed to be raised with Christ to break through all of the things that were hindrances, right? Where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on the things above and not on earthly things. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ and God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. See, how a star says you have to be raised with Christ. Listen, you got to sit still long enough for you to be raised. Because God knows that he has to do away with the foolish man. God knows that he has to do away with the unbelief, the doubt, the insecurities, so that he can raise you up to be who you're designed to be. And so when you're raised up, you are then able to seek the things above. See, I was only able to see the things that were in front of me. I was only able to see the bondage, but see, when I was raised up, I'm like, hold up. I 
am more than my eyesight. I go beyond what is tangible in the moment, right? I was able to seek the things above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. See, wherever God is, I say, I don't want you to go any, hey, don't leave me out. Wherever you go, I want to be. So that means I also have to be seated at the right hand where God is, right? You know why I get to do this? Because I set my mind on things that were above and not on earthly things. This is important. The reason why you do not need to set your, your mind on earthly things because no one knows why I exist. Excuse me. All the people that took advantage of me. You think they would have took advantage of me and mishandled me if they knew God's promise for my life? I was hidden in plain sight. So a lot of times when you dismiss me, you persecute me, you hate on me, you curse me, you ought to be one of my enemies or whatever that, for whatever case it may be. It's because you can't see me. You cannot see what I'm destined for. The only way that some of you may come around <laughs> and give me my kingdom credit is when you see the numbers go up, when you see uh, my bank account, the housing. But see, listen, it doesn't take all of that for me to see because I've been raised up with Christ. And that's been enough for me. To know that God means me so well and he's, he's for me and not against me, that was enough. Because I needed a giant to help me with my insecurities, with my doubt, with my depression, with my anxiety. Because I got tired of pretending to be okay. Right? So I had to die in the mist. So Jesus could raise me up into his character as he did the other disciples. Because how cool would it have been to be those chosen men to walk with Jesus? But I get the opportunity to do that now. I get the opportunity to have the Holy Ghost. To be speaking with you guys right now through me, through my temple. It says when Christ, who is... For, hold on, let's go back to verse 3. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. So a lot of times you will hear me reference myself as honey because that's my God-given identity. Patrice died, right? My flesh is still dying so that I can become honey. That's why the book is called Becoming Honey. It is a every, it's an ongoing thing. Because I've been Patrice so long that I forgot that I am a new person. It says, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ and God. I don't even know, honey. So God has to reveal the woman to me as I wake up in the day. That's why when you come in contact with me, I'm never going to be the same. I'm always changing, always evolving into this new woman. And verse 4 says, when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will, uh, also will appear with him in glory. I told you guys, my word on last week was glory, hidden glory. God is wanting this to be revealed. And as I'm speaking to this to you, glory is now in this verse as well. When you also will appear with him in glory. So... I can come on here knowing that God will reveal himself. He will reveal himself to honey. He will reveal himself to you. It's not me that I want you to see. I want you to see God because God is so great. And so when I said, I, I deliberately said on page 61 that I couldn't be changed. That I was dropped and so I surrendered tonight. <laughs> I surrendered to the hissing. I surrendered to the snakes in the garden. I surrendered 
to to people saying, I'll take you, especially if you don't want to be your best. I'll receive you, queen, especially if you uh, um, want to trade in your core to live in your flesh, right? See, page 62 said, I was adjusting to the news of liking a female myself so I could not rest heavily on the thoughts of others. My mind and heart were confused and disagreed nearly every day. So when people say that I was born this way and I, I'm doing this because this is my true self. Listen, you guys are listening and getting it from a person that battled with that stronghold of homosexuality for maybe 12 or 13 years. I wasn't born that way. As I tell you, I was interested in men at one point. God had to change my desires again. Because I thought I entered into an assimilation where God was playing with me. Where my family was playing with me. And I thought, not that I was wicked, that everything around me was wicked. And so I'm like, well, if everything is wicked, then, hey, baby, I'm about to join the party. And I'm about to live it up and um, have my way out here. But see, really what I did is I slowed myself down from receiving the promise. Guys, I talk about so many times I almost died in this book. If homosexuality was so good, why did my partners try to kill me over and over again in this book? Not the women, the spirit that was in the women. Why did the devil want me dead so bad? Because he knew <laughs> I will put a praise on God's name. And I will be the person to say, listen, I'm going to speak out what God says for me to say. Because there is destiny in this existence. There is destiny in every inhale and exhale, right? So I understand now that I am being raised with Christ. But I had to be I had to sit still long enough for me to be raised up into this new identity because if I did it, I would have missed it. I need you guys to read Colossians 3. Please read that. It's so it's so many nuggets in that. But I also was asked to go into Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. It says, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared ahead of time for us to do. So no matter that I got off course, I was prepared ahead of time. Workmanship. I am God's artistry. That is why I can do multiple things. Right? When I get out this ask honey, I have to go in and ask God, Hey, God, what is your plan for Saturday? How do you want me to show up? How can I be used as a temple in that room? It's not about sales. It's about impacting people to let them know the kingdom is at hand. Please, guys, grab a hold of God. Because it says, for we, who is we? You and myself. For we are his workmanship. God took his time to create us in Christ Jesus for good works. We got to get back to the good works. If we don't get back to God's good works, then we'll forget about what God's will is for our lives. And that's very scary. That's very scary because if you don't know that you're somebody, allow me to take the moment to say, you matter. You matter. All the way here to get on to this live, I was in a worship and I was li listening to C.C. Winans and Mary Mary and um, 
and I was I was I was um, in this praise and I'm like God I just feel like um, you're ready to speak to your people and I put a praise on God working in your life before you were able to do that because I'm so grateful for the people that tap in and watch this because I know it wasn't your will. I'm speaking to, I stand corrected. The Holy Ghost is speaking to your spirit man. You are somebody, there is a sense of belonging. God is saying, welcome home. I don't care what you in right now. Welcome home. Allow God to have his way. And lastly, meditate on Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. It says, but those who trust in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not become weary. They will walk and not faint. Guys, that's why I'm not defeated. That's why I don't come on here and get caught up in trying to please man. Listen, if God says this is my last day living, I care to please God so much to get it right. And it says, but those who trust in the Lord will renew their strength. How did I have strength? It's borrowed. Everything that I have is borrowed from Christ. <laughs> oh my gosh, he laid his life down so that I can lay my life down. I don't do nothing but imitate Jesus because I truly don't know how to serve a pure God. But it was Jesus that went ahead of me to teach the way. So I don't have to guess, how do I please God? I follow in the footsteps, right? And that's how I'm able to soar with wings like eagles. But guys, you haven't seen nothing yet. You haven't even seen the best of me because I have yet to meet the rest of me. So I just invite you on the journey. And it says, I will run and not faint. Excuse me. I will run and not become weary. And I will walk and not faint. That's the promise. I have to stand on this. That as God is stretching me, I will not faint. I will continue to run it out. As if I got, I've been conditioned for this. I got this, baby. I'm going to continue to go. Because if I don't go, what was the point of this prophecy? That there is change. Don't change a thing by you. God is getting ready to shift you to another place. Right? I don't wait until there's multiple vehicles in my yard. I don't wait until I get the house that's paid for it. I'll put a praise on it right now. Because as God is doing that thing. Because as I say author and poet. Do you know God is already working me to be the speaker? So I put a praise on that too. Do you already know God is working me to be that wife? So I go ahead and put the praise on that too. Do you know God is already working for me to be the disciple? So I go ahead and put a praise on that as well. Right? Because as God is working and spoke those things, he's already moving in time ahead of me to get people in alignment so I can continue to network and so that I can be on the stage. Guys, it's already happening. It's already been manifested. I can speak this destiny, right? So I speak over your lives and say that you too are yielding. You're being halted right now. You are to stand still. You are waiting on the Lord thy God, the spirit of the living God. Before you move, you will not move without God. You care to be in alignment. Right? Come on now. I cast down anything that is not of God. Right? And I speak to your ears. Ears come alive right now with the mighty name of Jesus. Right? Because guys... You need to make sure you're ready. 
because God sees exactly what you have done and what you are entertaining. You do not want to miss the mark. You need to get in your word because, listen, we live in peace now. Ain't nobody, there is no such thing as resting in peace when you die. You better rest in your peace right now. You better rest in your peace because you are going to accept the judgment on your life when you're dead. So it might be cool to look like you got it all together, but I'm talking to your soul. Get your soul right. Get your soul right. Make sure you in alignment because I don't care to kick it. I don't care to be looking cool to y'all. I care to look like um, one of those people that have been sold out to the good Lord and to the good shepherd because I have never seen someone do me any good like God is. There is no one that says I'm going to be for you when no one is for you. I'm going to call your name and say, yes, you matter to me. Yes, you belong. Right? So with that, I'm saying that you matter and you belong. Please don't lose trying to entertain everyone around you. Listen, no one loves you truly and unconditionally. If they're not concerned about your soul. I care about your soul. And where you will end up. Get in your word. Forget this. See nothing but spirit. Close your eyes and listen to this. I care about your soul. So. When God says. There was a one. That took the time and said. That she care about you. Do you remember? A woman by the name of honey? Why didn't you get out of your way? Why didn't you join her in the walk of the narrow path? Because there was no amount of money that's going to make you feel good. There is no number of friends. There is no number of likes. There is no number of shares that's going to be able to fill those voids and bring peace. Guys, I'm calling you to be raised up. With Christ, not with honey, but with Christ. But I like to close out with the freestyle. I like to close out with the freestyle. What's up, Instagram? I pray I have been looking at you guys. Y'all bear with me. I'm trying to do both, but let me, let me, let me, just, let me tap in. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. And to the man that spoke prophecy, wherever you are in the world, you are a true man of God. This has come alive. I'm grateful. All right, let's see. Let's get, let's go. Let's move on it back. Let's see. I think that's the loudest I can make it. Ha! Huh. Hey, I'm letting go, never looking back. I, I told God I'm following the Holy Ghost. So he be the professor and I make the professions. Claiming that no weapon formed against me will ever prosper. I am the golden child that's showering in this hour. So I say, good Lord, hey, come and rain on me. Ah. Let that goodness and that mercy follow me all the days of my life until I dwell in the house of the Lord. Hey, I ask that, <laughs> that heaven be made here on earth. I say, God, this is my turf, so everywhere I walk is the holy grail, the holy trail. Ah, please make a way. Please make a way. Listen, I'm not trying to fill up that safe. I'm trying to fill up the hearts with the good Lord. Christ. Hey, let that blood bleed all over those that need to be set free. I'm coming to move the shackles on their feet, but I only be one, one man to come and free my soul. So let that soul leap. Ah, I, I mean that speaker can't even speak for me. There is no, there's not enough bass that can take the bass out of this voice. I be the voice for the people. So God, please never let me get hoarse. You said. 
ask anything of me, righteous man. So God, I ask that you reveal your plan for your people and ah, please never take a life until they are able to offer over a sacrifice. So I lay my life here, God. Please have your way with me. Ah, see, I never can complain about the sufferings when I say that I stand for people. I told y'all if I love you, then I'll demonstrate it. <laughs> so allow honey to make her way. <laughs> As God make make his way on to you. Ah, I only do what a lover do. It's just I make my way around anything that's trying to have you as they playground. See, I used to be that, that caterpillar, but now I be a butterfly. I promise y'all I'm gonna fly, but I'm a, I don't even care to pass you by. I invite all you guys to sit on the right hand of the good Lord. <laughs> God, I want, I want you more and more. I come on here to share your glory, so please show the people what you have in store. <laughs> I won't tell the people what we talk about in private because some people ain't gonna believe until <laughs> they see that girl from the country cat from the country town from the red rose i'm just a young country girl <laughs> from south carolina they say ain't no devil in hell about to get in the way of this ah uh, just like Job, he rides man i'm coming for my double portion yeah <laughs> So God be my witness, man. God is my witness, man, that I am definitely for you, not against you. I'm for you, not against you, man. But I see 333. Thank you. Heaven, I receive. I receive you, God. I receive you, God. I receive you, God. Spirit of the living God. I'm so grateful. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Speak with them. Speak with them. Speak with them. Y'all listen. I feel I feel so great. I feel so great. I feel so great, man. Oh man, I feel so great. <laughs> Let's see. Now this time I want y'all to tell God how good he is. Ha. Huh. Let's speak at the enemy. Ha. Huh. I see you, Lucifer, how you try to be a target. But I say your hands have to be loose of my friends and my family. Listen, they may not call me family. They may think I'm an enemy, but <laughs> I still befriend those that's not really into me because I have the intimate settings to turn up the heat. See, you thought I was sinking in the fire, but I climbed out of the fire. Now I am the one that speaks through the wire. Ah. <laughs> Before I exist, I had my pre-existence with the God that speaks and blow in the mist. I say, let it rain. Let that spirit rain. Holy Ghost, have control of your man, your one man. God, I desire <laughs> to be the one that you desire in the hour. Hey, I call forth all their gifts. But if they won't rise, I still rise like the sunrise. <laughs> Like that rose, I still rose. I be that spoken poet. Listen, I never I never have to write it because it be in my temple. Before I sow a seed, I got to make sure that I elevate those that look on to me. <laughs> to elevate in the now. <laughs> but God, man, it's such a joy. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Spirit. I feel God. And so I'm so grateful, but I pray that you guys go back and watch this. I have to go back and watch it. Uh, but before I do, I just speak life. I speak peace. I speak joy. I speak patience. You got to be patient with that process. Be patient as you being raised by God, right? God the Son, right? It takes time right faithfulness gentleness self-control that doesn't come overnight but i am a living witness that is possible get in your living word 
Listen, it's time out for pretending. You ain't got to pretend with me, baby. You ain't got to pretend that you okay over here. Listen, I know, I know what it's like to be depressed. I know what it's like to be anxious. So much so that the enemy tries to plague. I ain't even going to give the enemy the credit. God is cleaning up my, my mind. And sometimes I go back to, is it, is it really okay to be happy? Is it really okay to, to be this filled with God, to be this anointed for such a time as this? I'm like, oh my gosh, I've only been used to <laughs> not being good enough that I don't even know this new feeling. But you know what? I'm walking it out. I'm grateful, and I'm grateful for you for giving God your time. Now, once you watch this, go back and get in your living word and study that word. I promise you will never be changed. Right? Don't watch God change and do a new thing in me. I want to see God do something in you. And who I be? I be the H to the U to the N-N-Y. Best known as honey. And when I say best known, I'm talking about in kingdom, baby. I don't know what you know me as. You might identify me something as my past life, but I'm talking about best known as honey. Love to the kingdom, to God the Son, God the Father, and the Holy Ghost, my assigned angels, and much love to you. Peace. My Instagram.